The Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984 was introduced as a response to a number of high-profile miscarriages of justice. The Act replaced a complex array of common law and legislative provisions. Section 66 of PACE provides for a number of codes of practice that provide additional detail on the legislative framework. Let's take a look at them. Code A of PACE relates to stop and search. An aspect of this is stop and account, whereby a police officer stops a member of the public and asks them to account for themselves or their actions. Such encounters are required to be recorded by the police. There are, of course, a number of other situations in which a police officer may stop and speak with the members of the public. Code A of PACE outlines a number of situations that give rise to such an encounter. These include engaging a member of the public in general conversation, giving or asking for directions, or seeking general information. Such encounters do not need to be recorded by the police. The general rule is that individuals um, stop and ask questions, but the police are not under a legal obligation to answer questions. The authority for this is the case of Rice v. Connolly, 1966. There are, however, some add-ons to this general rule. While there is no requirement in law to answer questions when stopped by the police, refusing to do so in a rude and or aggressive manner may constitute obstruction to the police, which is an arrest, arrest, uh, arrestable offense. As seen in Ricketts v. Cox, 1982, members of the public are not under legal obligation to attend at a police station unless they are under arrest. An individual who does attend a police station voluntarily is entitled to leave at any time unless subsequently placed under arrest. It is settled law that the police do not have the power to detain individuals short of arresting them for the purposes of assisting them with their inquiries. If a police officer takes hold of a person in order to prevent them from leaving or in order to compel them to answer questions, this could constitute an unlawful detention or common assault. Stop and search like um, arrest is a police power that most people are aware of. It is also a police power that has attracted much controversy. Code A governs the exercise of police powers without first making an arrest. Section 1 of PACE provides that a police officer may search a person or vehicle in a public place for stolen or prohibited items. This power can be exercised only where the police have reasonable grounds for suspecting that they will find stolen or prohibited items. The police are entitled to seize any prohibited items found during the search. The power to stop and search must be exercised fairly and with respect for the person being searched. The Equality Act 2010 makes it unlawful for police officers to discriminate against or harass any person on the grounds of the protected characteristics. The police can also carry out strip searches but only at a nearby police station or other location, which is out of public view. An officer of the same sex as the suspect may must carry out a strip search. Section 55 of PACE allows the police to conduct an intimate search of the suspect. This type of search must be authorized by superintendent who must have grounds for believing that a weapon or drug is concealed in the body or a fees. The search itself must be conducted by a healthcare professional. Following arrest, police officers need to ser uh, search suspects for evidence or anything that may be used to cause harm. Section 32 of PACE allows a police officer to search a person under arrest at a place other than a police station and Section 54 of PACE allows the police to search an arrested person on arrival at the police station. Code B of PACE relates to the search of premises. It is important to note that the premises in question must be occupied or controlled by the suspect that the searches should be made at a reasonable hour. Section 18 of PACE allows the police to search the premises of a person under arrest for an indictable offense. Section 18 subsection 3 limits the power to search to the extent that is reasonably required for the purpose of discovering such evidence. Code B allows the police to use reasonable and proportionate force to gain entry to premises if the occupier has refused entry or if it is not possible to communicate with the occupier. Before starting the search, a police officer should identify themselves to any person present at the premises. They should also explain the grounds for the search. The police can seize and retain evidence obtained in the search. Under Section 8 of PACE, the police can apply to a magistrate for a search warrant. 
A warrant may be granted where there are reasonable grounds to, for believing that an indictable offense has been committed, that there is material on the premises which is likely to be of substantial value to the investigation of the offense, and that the material is likely to be relevant to the evidence, and that it, uh, that it does not consist or include uh, items subject to a legal privilege, excluded material, or special procedure material. The police do still, however, have a range of powers under PACE to search premises without a warrant. Section 17 of PACE allows the police to enter and search premises in order to execute a warrant of arrest, arrest without warrant, capture someone unlawfully at large, protect people from serious injury, and pro uh, pro protect property from serious damage. Other searches of premises without warrant can, that can be conducted under PACE include a search under Section 18 of PACE that allows the police to search the premises of a person under arrest for an indictable offense. Having said that, let's move on to the consider arrest. Arrest is governed by Code C and G of PACE. Lawful arrest can be divided into arrest under warrant, common law arrest, and arrest under legislation. A warrant of arrest authorities the police to arrest the person named on the warrant. The, they can be used in circumstances such as non-appearance in court, breach of bail conditions, or failure to answer bail. A common law power of arrest uh, exists in the case of a breach of the peace. A breach of peace occurs when actual harm is done or likely to be done to a person or to a person's property in their presence. We are now moving to consider arrest un under legislation. The police have the power to arrest without warrant. This general power of arrest exists under Section 24 of PACE. In order to arrest without warrant, a person must be about to commit an offense or is committing an offense or a person is involved in offense and there are reasonable grounds for believing that a person's arrest is necessary. In order for an arrest to be lawful, the sub suspect must be informed at the time of this arrest that they are under arrest. The suspect must be informed of the reasonable uh, of the grounds for arrest. Reasonable force may be used in order to carry out an arrest. We are now moving on to consider the right to silence before moving on to consider interview. Let's look at the right to silence before interview first. Individuals accused of a criminal offense have traditionally afforded a right to silence. Earlier in the chapter, we discussed a general rule in English law in relation to answering police questions. That general rule being that there is no legal obligation to answer police questions, bar the exceptions. Other than the statutes such as Terrorism Act 2000 and Criminal Act 1987 create a legal duty to provide information. Having said that, let's now move on to the right to silence at interview and in court. Naturally, nothing can be done physically to compel a suspect to answer questions. However, judge and the prosecution are now able to make comment in certain situations on the silence of the defendant, thus allowing the court to draw such interference as appear proper from the silence of the accused. Code C and Code E of PACE relate to the aspect of interview. In the case of indictable offenses, all interviews with suspects are tape recorded on time-coded tapes. Code C of PACE stipulates that police officers are not allowed to use oppressive questioning methods in order to elicit information from the suspect. Code C of PACE also stipulates that all persons in custody must be dealt with expeditiously and released as soon as the need for a detention no longer applies. Let's move on to the next stage of the criminal justice system, release and bail. The term bail refers to the temporary release of a suspect from custody. This release is pending the trial of the suspect. There is a presumption in favor of granting bail to a suspect. Bail may be denied in the case of certain offenses or where there is a history of committing a particular offense. In this pen, uh, penultimate section, we are going to consider who brings per prosecutions in the English legal system. The key prosecuting authorities are the Crown Prosecution Service, and the police, and the Attorney General. To end things off, we'll take a brief look at the mechanisms in place that ensure a person accused of a criminal offense is afforded the right to a fair trial. These include statutory safeguards such as PACE 1984 as well as common law safeguards. For example, the burden of proof rests on the prosecution. Furthermore, the European Convention of Human Rights reinforces the protection afforded domestically.